हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दिस वीडियो इज़ द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द क्रॉस टॉक वीडियोस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी व्हाट इज क्रॉस टॉक एंड हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ क्रॉस टॉक एनालिसिस इज देयर एंड द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ क्रॉस टॉक एनालिसिस व्हिच इज क्रॉस टॉक ग्लिच एनालिसिस वी विल सी दैट पार्ट इन डिटेल सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट so what is crosstalk crosstalk refers to the unintentional coupling of activity between two or more signals which can either affect the functionality or the timing of the device so let's say there are two or more metal wires running in parallel to each other and if they are parallel to each other then it is possible that there is a coupling capacitance between them so because of this coupling capacitance if any switching activity is ha happening on one particular signal then it might affect the other signal as well so basically what is happening there is an unintentional unintentional coupling is happening between two signals so this unintentional coupling is called cross crosstalk victim and aggressor are the most commonly used terminologies used while understanding crosstalk so let's see what are they so so the signal which is getting affected is called the victim as the name suggests and the signal which is affecting is the aggressor and we need to remember that a particular net can act as a victim as well as an aggressor now let's try to understand how a particular net can be a victim as well as an aggressor see there are two scenarios possible one is that uh, this happens during different timing windows like during one particular time this particular net is uh, the switching on this particular net is strongest than this net then this will act as an aggressor and this will act as a victim uh, and during another timing window the switching on this net is stronger than this particular net so it can act as an aggressor for this net during another time so it means this particular net is acting as a victim as well as an aggressor during different timing windows or it is even possible that during say same timing window only the switching on this net is stronger then the switching on this particular net is comparatively weaker than this net then in that case this this is acting as a victim and this is acting as an aggressor but switching on this net is even weaker than this particular net so this net can act as an aggressor for this net so during the same win timing window this net or can act as a victim as well as an aggressor so what are the scenarios in which crosstalk is possible so one scenario is that aggressor is switching and victim is steady so in that case the glitch happens so that kind of analysis is called crosstalk glitch analysis and there is one more case in which victim and aggressor both are switching so in that case delta so there is some delay happens so that kind of analysis is called crosstalk delta delay so in this particular video we will go in detail about crosstalk glitch analysis and in part 2 we will see the crosstalk delta delay let's start understanding what is crosstalk glitch analysis through this diagram as you can see here this particular net is switching from 0 to 1 and this particular net is steady it is it is active low net okay right now it is at 0 so now what is happening uh, this since this particular net is switching and this particular net is steady we can say that this net is an aggressor and this net is an victim now as you can see there is a coupling capacitance exist between these two net and because of this unintentional coupling the switching of this net is also affecting this steady low signal the switching of low to high of this aggressor net is also trying to pull this steady low signal to a high value now what can happen let's say that the magnitude of this particular glitch is significant enough or we can say that the height and width of this particular glitch is significant enough to be interpreted as 1 instead of 0 by this nand gate then uh, one will be propagated through this nand gate instead of zero so can we say that this particular glitch can affect the functionality of the device because instead of zero one will be propagated so if the glitch magnitude is large enough to be seen as different logic value 
by the fan out cells then the functionality of the circuit can be affected so in this way crosstalk glitch can be disastrous to the device functionality so let's try to understand the factors on which the magnitude of the glitch depends so here are the four factors on which the magnitude of glitch depends the number one is the coupling cap between aggressor and victim so the greater the coupling cap the greater the glitch magnitude okay number second is the slew of aggressor the faster the slew of the aggressor net the larger the magnitude of the glitch why because we can think in this way because if the if the slew is faster then can we say that the switching is stronger on that net and if the switching is stronger then uh, the glitch magnitude will be more or we can think in this way also that why the uh, uh, the slew of the aggressor net will be faster when the drive strength output drive strength of the driver cell is more and if the output drive strength of driver cell is more it means the switching on this net will be more and glitch will be more the third point is the victim net ground capacitance so if the victim net ground capacitance is more then the glitch magnitude will be less because it can it can fastly restore the value on the victim net to its original state then the third one is victim net driving strength if the victim net driving strength is more then the glitch will be the glitch magnitude will be less and if the driver strength victim less is a victim net is less then the glitch magnitude will be more now there are four types of glitches which can occur let's try to understand all these four type of glitches through and diagram through a diagram so this uh, dashed line represents the aggressor net and this blue line represents the victim net so rise glitch happens when the aggressor net is switching from 0 to 1 and victim net was at steady low signal was a steady low signal so when the aggressor net was switching from 0 to 1 it is trying to pull this steady low victim net to a high value that's why the name is rise glitch so rise glitch happens when the aggressor net is switching from 0 to 1 and victim net was at steady low which at 0 level and the fall glitch happens when the aggressor is switching from high to low and the victim was at steady high signal and the aggressor is trying to pull the victim net from high to low so uh, that's when fall glitch happens so can we say that rise and fall glitch happens when the aggressor tries to pull the victim net in towards the opposite direction of what victim net is originally at for example rise glitch is happening because victim net was at low value and uh, aggressor was trying to pull uh, it at the high value and the fall glitch was happening because the uh, victim net was at high value and the aggressor was pulling it towards the low value so it was pulling towards the opposite direction and that's when rise and fall glitch was happening but what if the aggressor tries to pull the victim net towards the similar same direction for example what if the aggressor is switching from low to high and the victim net is already high so in that case the victim net will get pulled even up even more high so this is called overshoot when the victim net is high and the aggressor is switching from zero to high so it will make the victim net given um, go even higher so this is called overshoot and similarly if the victim net was at low a signal uh, was at low signal and uh, aggressor was switching from high to low it will make victim net go even lower so that's called undershoot so this is when undershoot happens so that's all from the part one of crosstalk video guys in part two we will see the crosstalk delta delay analysis and uh, for this particular video please let me know your feedback in the comment section below and this book was used as a reference to make this video thanks for watching